Hi everyone and welcome to episode 48 of the Guild Mag podcast. We're here that for another podcast week. thing that happens sometimes. That thing we do. Um, I probably should do our little social media thing here that didn't go because I'm multitasking like what? Like no, like nobody else's business. I know and of course my app just decided to eat my thing so. We're multitasking here. like Abaddon from Beyond the Grave. What? <laughs> Because <laughs> that, because that was that little Guild Wars one pimpage or something. Listen, he was happened. pulling a lot of strings down there. He totally was. Yeah. So, I think it was an app comparison. Although the way that they uh, was it Nightfall that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, that we were like, what? What was the reason for all this lore? Oh, just Abaddon did it. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, it was. Come on, it was a good. It was a good ride. I enjoyed the ride, and then the reveal was just kind of like, oh. Yeah. He was, he, was just, he was just evil for the sake of being evil. That's cool. No <laughs> yeah. worries. No worries. But, you know. All right. So, uh, this week, we've got some stuff to talk about. Um, we're we're going to be talking about player rewards, because um, it's a thing. And uh, what we think about what should, be, what should be rewarded through our gameplay, as opposed to, you know... All that cool stuff that comes out of the junk should, store, which seems to be a lot more. Pull my wallet out for. I know. What's up with that? So, um, all right, let's get into our thing and let me not multitask. Uh, so we've got some gem store. We're going to start off with some gem store news and community stuff. You know, all of the stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. This week we had chaos gloves, Guild Wars One throwback, come into the gem store. They were like five hundred gems or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of that? I uh, So I like them, and I bought them because mm -hmm. I have them in Guild Wars 1, and in Guild Wars 1, they were kind of the, like, they were the bee's knees, right? They were. So you needed, like, you needed to have them in Guild Wars 1. I feel like you need to have them in Guild Wars 2. Yeah. I hate that they're on the gem store because I think they would make an awesome in-game reward. Yep. Uh, I think they would make a really good prestige item like they did in Guild Wars 1, but, mm -hmm. you know, we don't really have those anymore. So, uh, um, well, I bought them, but my, uh, my bubble was burst a little bit because they clip with my shield on my revenue. And I know that that's like a thing for you. Clipping yeah. just kind of ruins they, things for you. They How clip does it... right through the shield. That's just bizarre. I mean, it's awful. Your, ar your player's arms don't clip through the shield, do they? No, it's the aura that clips through the shield. It's, uh, you just got this little glowy smudge on the front of your mm -hmm. nice burnished metal shield. It's uh, it's a bit of an eyesore, really. So I decided to play with it for a while and see if I can stand it. I've still got them on on my revenant, but they might they might be going bye bye. They could they could totally work on my engineer though, because my engineer is using the radiant gloves, mm -hmm. and the chaos gloves are kind of like better versions of the radio yeah. glove. Yeah. So I might just switch them to my engineer and then mm -hmm. I'll be a happy. Yeah. Well, I picked them up because I always wanted them in Guild Wars 1 and I never did get them in Guild Wars 1. They're they're pretty expensive. I know. <laughs> so and I always every time I see anyone in Guild Wars 1 running around with them, I just covet them. So I was like, "Oh, Gil Chaos gloves. Yes, finally." Mm -hmm. So I did pick them up. I think I threw them on. I don't think I threw them on my Mesmer. Maybe I did. I don't know. I unlocked them, though. They're there. I'm going to be happy when I get to stick them around. I was p doing some Thief play this week, which was kind of fun. What I like Thief. Is, Thief is all right. I, I don't play it a lot, but it's fun when I play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My Thief is kind of neglected. She could use some... She could use... I could let her out of the cage a little bit. Yeah. Well, I always feel like thief, if thief is one of those professions that just has never quite completely clicked with me, even though I have fun when I play it. I'm always yeah. thinking, like, I must be doing this wrong because I don't know. And thief yeah, is no, really when squishy. I'm playing, yeah, I'm bad at, I'm a very poor thief. Nobody wants, nobody wants me thiefing on their PvP <laughs> team, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But I, I, when I take my thief out, I'm like, hey, I'm fast and I'm doing a lot of damage and my animations are awesome. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. So that's yeah. my thief experience. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, I I have a level eighty thief and I got her to eighty and I stopped playing her. 
And then I had this little, I've got this little one that was sitting around like level 25, I think. And um, I took out that level 80 insta boost and I did the trial on it just to see what kind of builds they would uh, default default them into. And they d- defaulted them into Valkyrie's gear mm. across the board. Um, I think the weapons included. Which is nice on the power and it gives you some survivability because your health pool... I was uh, running around on a thief with 22k health and I was like whoa, <laughs> I don't think I've seen <laughs> this for a while. <laughs> yeah, because it gives you some vitality for mm. days. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, and I liked the build that they did so I started to play around with it and then I undid the boost and then just kind of used up I, I I was did some in bank management cleared out my bank used up all of these a stack of like writs of experience plus a couple yeah. of times yeah I have too many writs of experience mm-hmm. I need to condense them down into tomes yeah I yeah. do that every so often I just throw them in my bank until I get a stack and then I condense them back yeah. down well I used them on her and I got her to like level 50 Nice. Plus, I used a couple of tomes as well, so that cleared out some space. <laughs> so you're just going to keep the level 80 boost around to uh, have it as a temporary, uh, yeah. to use the temporary feature on new characters. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a couple of classes. Like, Thief is a class that's never really, I feel, has never really clicked with me. Warrior, I'm, like, super bad at. And uh, Engineer is a class that I have fun with, but I'm always thinking, I feel like this should be better. And it's a class that I feel like I just haven't completely figured out even though i've got a max level character on on it. engineer and guardian are the only two classes i'm any good any good at mm-hmm. otherwise i'm bad at everything else <laughs> but i i like i agree with what you do with the level 80 booster like i'm just gonna keep it as oh i'll check out builds for new characters with this and then i'll use my tomes to actually level yeah. them because i have four billion tomes so mm-hmm. there's no point wasting the level 80 booster if i can just have a free temporary 80 right. trial run yeah so that's yeah. what i'm probably gonna do with that is just keep it indefinitely mm-hmm. yeah so i had fun with that this week um and uh you know that i liked the build that they gave um it was it went into like uh shadow arts deception and the trickery line i think mm. anyway but yeah, Decept- so that was fun. I didn't know Deception was a thief trait line. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm... No, Deadly Arts. I'm sorry. Deadly Arts, Deadly Shadow Arts, arts yeah. and Trickery. That's what it is. Yeah. Deceptions are the skills. Oh, yeah. You can tell I play Thief a lot. <laughs> yeah, you're a primetime yeah. thief. Yeah, there you go. Um, anyways, so... Yeah, that's that's what I did with my, my level 80 boost. And I got those Chaos Gloves. So, woohoo! Um, mm. So, uh, in community news this week... There's new Guild Wars 2 merchandise in I Am 8-Bit's Guild Wars 2 store. And, uh, Some of it's a little bit neat. Yeah, what's up? What's there? What caught your eye there, Mr. Aaron? Oh, I mean, there's like there's a bunch of pins, which I was like, I'm not much of a pin guy, but if you like pins, there's the Quacken and the German Priory and the mm-hmm. Vigil and the Order of Whispers and stuff. I like how they have the three Order pins and then just Quacken. Yeah. Like, that's... <laughs> all right, then. Because everyone um, loves a quaggin. <laughs> yeah, screw the other races. Quaggins get a pin, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. And then they had, like, profession sticker packs, which I was like, okay, if you want to throw your, you know, your 10-year-old a Guild Wars 2 theme birthday party, this is perfect. Okay. So I like, I like where this is going. They did the same for the Elite Specializations with the sticker pack. Yeah. So uh, if you've got a kid that plays some Guild Wars... There you go. Throw them, throw them a Guild Wars 2 birthday party. You can have the there stickers you know. everywhere. Yeah, I was thinking I might pick up the stickers and just throw them all over my laptop. Because, yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, let's, <laughs> let's be honest. Adults being um, as creative as we are can find more uses for stickers. Maybe. The, ki- the kids will probably just put them on their face and then they'll fall off within a day. Yeah. So the stickers, while well, they look like a kid's prize, are actually probably more t- marketed towards adults. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> But uh, the two things I really like are the Dragon Stand print and the Super Adventure Crew poster. Yeah. Those are actually neat. Those I would neat. totally, I would totally consider. I'm considering one of them. Like I want, I feel like I want a Guild Wars two print or a poster, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I just can't. And there's a lot of options, and I just can't decide which one I want to get. Right. So these are kind of adding to my option pool for that item that mm-hmm. I need in my life. Yeah. So I'm I'm happy that those got added. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they've got some neat prints um, in that store. Uh, and they've also got the uh, Guild Wars 2 soundtrack on vinyl. That's in yeah. there for sure now. 
Um, I feel like I need to buy all the prints and posters and make them a collage and then have that be my new podcast background. Mm-hmm. That's an idea. Yeah, that's yeah. really expensive, though. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> it's, also, it's also a lot of work. <laughs> You're like, I'm, I'm good with just this. <laughs> yeah. Well, life. this was a lot of work, so yeah. I don't want to do more work. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy talk. But if you do want to pick up anything out of I Am 8-Bits collection, um, we have a discount code for you. It's just GW2 Guild Mag, all one word. Um, and I'll throw that into chat. In a sec, and that will get you 15% off discount. So there you go. Save yourself some money and get yourself some uh, swag. Now, question: Do you have to capitalize GW and the G and the M in Guild Mag? Uh, I would probably say yes. Okay. Just copy paste, copy pasta. There you go, um, and try it out. See what happens. But you'll get 15%. 15% off on your total. Nice. Yes. Also this week we saw some um, PvP Pro League drama. And now I'm not a follower of the PvP Pro League, but I do. Drama. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I do occasionally will pay attention to like what news is coming out about the different teams. Um, so this caught my attention. Car Crashed and Frostball from Vermilion were banned through the end of the 2016 season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know a little bit more about this. You, I the, mean, the details. It's, you like, you, like I don't follow PvP either, right? But you can't really follow the game and not hear about this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Car Crash, one of their players, was it um, Sam? I want to say. Well, Sam's character was being used, and it was yeah from Car Crash wasn't able to play, right? right. So they were like, "Let's be sneaky, grab our buddy Frostball from Vermilion, Vermilion. have him uh, sub in." You know what I'm saying? So uh, I know. But, they uh, had uh, Frostball playing on Sam's account, and, you know, Gilbert's 2 can tell if you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, they won't disclose why, for obvious reasons, because they can't have their how their, their security operations out in the open like that. Right. But I'd imagine that's something to do with IP address and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, it, long and short of the story is, they were like, yo, dog, you... Uh, you think you're being sneaky? We can we can see what's up. Yeah. And they banned everybody that had anything to do with it through 2016. So yeah. I don't know. I think that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. Sh- Jebro was um Jebro has a video out that has a little uh, commentary, kind of a recap and commentary on it. I don't know. I'll link that in chat. And um, he was he had shout casted that match. And he, he he commented like, you know, Sam's playing pretty good these days on that Mesmer. He's looking, oh, he's looking, he's looking like he improved. And uh, oh, that's, that's just that's the worst. Rough. That's, that's worse. That's rough. <laughs> when someone's summoned in for you, and you're like, hey man, he's uh, a lot better now. I know. <laughs> oh, harsh. That's it's horrible. I know. But uh, you know, cheater, cheater. Pumpkin eater. But yeah. So I don't know. I'm. I don't know. If will this get me to watch? pvp pro league i don't know keep the drama happening guys <laughs> make I, it interesting I, mix it up i want to see news from the esports world of guild wars 2 and maybe i'll start watching i never catch it live but sometimes yeah. i'll turn on one of jebro's videos and be like this is more compelling than league of legends at any rate yeah. so <laughs> i yeah. could i could it, like if if i'm going to watch an esport it'll be guild wars 2 right because i just it's the only thing i semi know what's going on mm-hmm. in mm-hmm yeah. Except the people, like, the pl- gameplay is so fast, and the people are playing at such a high level that it's still, like, gibberish to me. Right. But at least I know what things mean on the screen. Right. Yeah. So it's more watchable to me than most things. Sometimes I turn it on yeah. and watch it while I, like, play Guild Wars or something. Right, right, yeah. Jebro's casts are entertaining, I think, too. Yeah, he's, he's a really good caster, so that helps yeah. a lot. Absolutely. So that was that drama. Um, thought I'd bring that up. And uh, in game news, or game news, community news, this is kind of a slash combo deal. Uh, there is a poll out for the World vs. World community. And they are trying to determine what the dev team should work on next. And the poll is out until May 4th. What you do is uh, you go to that the link, which I'll stick in chat right now. Um, and... You, they ask you to log into your basically your account, and then it gives you the poll, and it's basically three questions, something like that. It's pretty short. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's multiple choice, um, and yeah. So that that will be up until May fourth. 
it's basically it looked a lot like uh, quality of life fixes. Nothing yeah, big time major. Um, well, the, like well, the biggest one that stood out to me was the quali- was voting for quality of life changes versus uh, scoring changes. Yeah. And a lot of people will probably jump at the quality of life, but I totally voted for scoring because yeah. I feel like uh, mm-hmm. gameplay is in a good place in WW and scoring is really broken. Mm-hmm. So I feel like scoring would just impact the game mode a lot more right now than quality of life stuff would. So I definitely voted for scoring there. Yeah. Because that's, I think that's going to help so much more mm-hmm. yeah, in the, the short term. Scoring seemed to be popular. Um, amongst a lot of pay- players that were commenting on the forum thread for this. Mm-hmm. So I'm not yeah, surprised. Cause, yeah, people who play the game mode know that the scoring needs serious help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. not a, I'm not a dubby dubber, but I have ran, ventured into Edge of the Mist and that was that was enough for me. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a different animal. It is, it is. <laughs> it's, it's fun when you get in there, I think. Um, yeah. I just like my PvP. It's it's Zergalicious. It's Zergalicious. Yeah, I do like the Zerg fights. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that poll is open until May 4th, and they also said that they will announce the majority vote winner on that day, which s- seemed a bit odd to me. So they didn't specify what times the poll will be mm. closing and the announcement would come out. But May 4th, get your votes in. All right, and that takes us through this week's news. It was a short news week. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's jump into our main discussion here. We're talking in-game rewards versus gem store items. And one of the things that triggered, I think, this idea for the topic today was uh, this one forum post uh, that came out. I'm on the wrong machine again, uh, which I'll link into chat. And it's talking about new uh, Mystic Forge recipes, new items, mm-hmm. basically. They haven't said what the recipes are, what I mean, the items are. I mean, well, they've said what the items are broadly in categories. Yeah, I mean, so there's their new recipes. They're not necessarily new items. Mm-hmm. Are there actual new items added with it, or is it... Because from what I was aware, it was just old items are yeah. being reintroduced into the game via the Mystic Forge. Including the Bloodbound. The new rewards possible are Bloodbound weapons, Aetherized weapons, Shadow of the Mad King weapons, and some orphaned skins from Living World Season 1. I'm really, I'm really sad that the aetherized weapons are in there because I have the pistols and I like that they were like a thousand gold on the trading post. I was like, yeah, I have those. Right. And now, and now they're they're gonna their price is gonna shoot way down, right? It's the same for people who had like ghastly grinning shields. Now they're super sad because their shield is a tenth of its former value. Mm-hmm. But hey, that means I can finally get a ghastly grinning shield now, so I'm not complaining. Um, overall, and then I didn't even guys, I didn't even know the bloodbound weapons were a thing. Me neither. Until I look, I looked up on the wiki how you get them, and it's uh-huh. like you trade certain weapons into these vendors in Maguma, and I was like, Oh, I didn't, those I didn't weapons, even know, okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know that. Like, I had no idea those existed, so that's kind of cool that mm-hmm. you can now get those out of the forge. Yeah, those are those but, faction vendors, right? Those faction merchants. Yeah, the provisioner. Provisioner. The provisioner faction, faction guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't even know about this. It's crazy. But, well, well, yeah, like, it kind of... Oh, go ahead. No, no, I'll go ahead, keep going. I'll bring it up later. <laughs> oh, I was just like, it was kind of, because the Mystic Forge thing kind of got me thinking, because I always like it when they put new Mystic Forge stuff in, because they've done it before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes, new things we can go after in-game. That's awesome. Right. And it made me think about, you know, oh, we get so much stuff on the gem store. And I get that we still get things in game. Like it's not fair to say we don't get anything in game because we do. Right. But the sheer amount of gem store stuff we get right makes it feel like we don't get anything in game. Yeah. I think is more the issue. Because yeah. there's new gem store stuff every, literally every week. Yes. Every single week, fifty two weeks a year, nonstop. There's new gem store stuff. Like, yeah. like no like the, joke. Like the chaos gloves that just came. Out. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. crazy how mm-hmm. much gem store stuff we get in this game. I think for a game that has such a fair gem store model, mm-hmm. it's impressive how much gem store stuff we get. So it's definitely sort of a controversial issue. It's not controversial, but it's sort of a thing that rubs players the wrong way. How much gem store we get versus how much in-game rewards we get. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think with I, I was kind of surprised that they would that they did throw the um, bloodbound into that when you can just pick it up from the merchants. 
Mm -hmm. I I think it might have been because a lot of people, like me, don't even know that that's a thing. Like, I didn't know those existed, right? Right. So maybe they get one out of the forge, they're like, ooh, Bloodbound, what's this? They look look it up on the wiki, they see, whoa, I can get the set in Maguma. Right. And then they go do that. And now you've got people people playing in Maguma more. Right. So So another little marketing thing. A roundabout way of shunting people into the Maguma jungle. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I hadn't thought of that, but they I literally had never run into the faction's uh, provisioners until the spring update dropped, because I was never on a map that had completed the tiers for mm-hmm. the meta. That, and so and I'm glad that they're available now all the time, rather than being gated behind the tiers, because it didn't make, it didn't make sense. I mean, yeah, you think about the the dry top merchants. Um, they chain. They they're always there, and their their items are always available. It's just their prices that change depending on what what you've completed. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm glad that the season one weapon skins are coming back in a way. This way, mm-hmm. at least, it's it's more content that was available um, temporarily. Bringing that back seems like a good idea. The Mad King weapons, those are around for Halloween, so I don't know. Yes, what, what do you... but um, the the Grinning Gourd rifle, the Ghastly Grinning Shield, those things, mm-hmm. they were only around for, I believe, the first Halloween. And then they just came back for uh, either 2014 or 2015 Halloween, mm-hmm. and they only came back in like an RNG way. So they were worth thousands of... They were worth more than legendaries were on the trading post, right. essentially. Yeah. Because of how stupid rare they were. So ultimately, it's... I mean, I'm conflicted, right? Because on the one hand, I like having cool things in game like that, where it's like, yeah, there's this one thing on the trading post that's like 10,000 gold, right? I like I like having that there just because it adds character to the game. Mm-hmm. But I also like things being accessible to players. And it's still not a cheap item, right? There's still, like, the Ghastly Grinning Shield is still, like, 400 gold or 300 gold on the trading post. Mm-hmm. So it's not like there's no prestige to that item anymore. Right. You just don't have the prestige that it once was yeah so that's interesting yeah I mean, that kind of brings up the point they have tried different ways to bring in these um festival rewards uh the halloween um they had the rng drops and then they had like the things like the hexed outfit um and was it ghostly the ghostly carlotta mini that you could actually yeah. trade in for... You could trade candy corn, I think it was, um, to get those. So why not do more of that um, where you can earn it? I think earning it is better than RNG. Yeah, and it's because there's a prerogative for them to make money, right, on right. the gem store. Um, I'm sure they have a certain threshold they have to hit sales-wise mm-hmm. to uh, continue existing under NCSoft's tyranny. Right. But, um... <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh... NCSoft's not the worst by any no. stretch of the imagination, no. but... Right. You know, there are there are prerogatives they have to meet. So, yeah, they have... I mean, it's just... The thing I find amazing is the rate at which they crank out this gem store stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they push out content for the gem store like crazy. Mm-hmm. They gotta have like a size not a sizable team because they're just little items and stuff right it's not mm-hmm. that big a deal but they've got to have a team of like what 10 people working on this gem store stuff at least you know and they have said in the past that it's easier to design for the gem store because they're one off items usually Out- outfits are easier than armor yeah. sets yeah that goes without saying because you don't mm-hmm. have to piecemeal them you don't have to worry about clipping you don't have to worry about you know you only have four die channels to worry about instead of 29 mm-hmm. so i pull i made that number yeah, up but yeah. you know there's a lot of die channels on armor sets versus mm-hmm. on uh, outfits, outfits. Mm-hmm. and but at the same time those are all contributing factors as to why i prefer armor sets to outfits so you have this product that you sell on the gem store that's really easy to pump out but at the same time, people don't like it as much because it has all these inferiorities because of how easy it is to pump out, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's a trade-off there 
and you know they get their 700 gems for their outfits mm-hmm. whatever people buy them the the crazy thing is i don't see people wearing outfits all that much in uh, the game yeah like uh i do, the reason i don't wear outfits is cuz i don't like looking exactly the same as anyone else mm-hmm. right and even if your die schemes change you're still going to look thread for thread Mm-hmm. Um, the same as somebody else, mm-hmm. but I really don't see people. Even when cool outfits come out, like that uh, lunatic guard one, mm-hmm. uh, I don't. I just I don't see people wearing outfits much and I, that much. And I think it's because they just prefer the mix and match style of armor sets. Yeah, and I think too, like the lunatic guard outfit. That's very f- event or not event, but festival season driven. So I could see where people would hold off on wearing it um, more. I mean, I remember when that one, like, the reason I used that one is because when it came out, it was like, there was fire on your head, right? Yeah. And you could change the color. Mm-hmm. And people were like, you can change the color of the fire, man. Yeah. It's so cool, man. And then uh, people wore it for, like, three days, and then they were done. Mm-hmm. So I just, I see this trend of, yeah, they soak up their sh- sales short term for these outfits, but then I feel like people don't enjoy the, like... I feel like people think they're going to enjoy this outfit and get their money out of it, and then they don't. Right, right, right. Um, and I feel, I also feel like they don't realize that they didn't get what they wanted to get out of the outfit, and so they don't get disgruntled. Mm-hmm. And so, since that disgruntlement from that purchase isn't there, they keep buying the outfits, right? So, there's this kind of vicious cycle, and it's not that Anet's tricking them, it's yeah. just that I don't feel like their product has the value that both sides think it does right yeah i think it also depends on the type of player um and what's being purchased like you think you look at the black and white feather wings which were really popular everyone had them when they came out on the gem store um then they skinned them to be glider skins that you could get for free just by talking to a Mm -hmm. an npc um and I have seen people use them, using them more as glider skins now, rather than... I was going to say, actually, the, uh, the complete opposite of the outfits, and also the other thing that sparked kind of this discussion, was the gliders. Yeah. You know, we've been coming out with a lot of gliders on the Jump Store recently, and the completely opposite of the outfits, I see tons of people using the gliders. Mm-hmm. Everybody uses the Jump Store gliders. I see that freaking bubble everywhere yep. that I liked at first, and now I'm sick of. You bought and it, didn't I, you? I did, and I used it for a little bit, and then I think it was last stream, actually, I was just like, you know what, I'm not into this, so I switched back to the, uh, fl- like, the flamey one, uh-huh. and I see a lot of people using the electromagnetic one, and just everybody's using the gemstore gliders, so they are making a killing yeah. on the gliders, but what depresses me is we don't really have many gli- are there any glider skins you can learn in-game? I think there's... One. I think there might be a couple, but there's, well, and there's it's a couple. Hopefully, yeah, underrepresented. They've got the legendary um, PvP. Is it the legendary PvP back piece and the, the legendary um, fractal? The fractal back, back piece. piece. Can those be glider skins? Yes, though? they're going to be. Book glider oh, skins. that's yeah. That's so that's cool. kind of cool. I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. But those are also like borderline impossible for, to get for ninety-eight percent of players. So yeah, so they become I pre- mean that, they become prestige items like those chaos clubs we were just yeah. talking about. Yeah, they are prestige items, but they don't have any um, like normal, you know, for us normies out there. Mm-hmm. They don't have they don't have any more attainable glider skins that are available in game. They're just on the gem store for what like four hundred gems, five hundred gems. So yeah. that's an easy purchase. They get their you know you have to buy eight hundred for that, so they get their ten bucks out of you. Then oh maybe yeah. you have three hundred. And you only need 100 more for another glider skin, so you buy another 800, and it's a vicious cycle. Ah! Yeah, but, I mean, with making the glider skins legendary is and prestige, is not is that giving an incentive to people to try different game modes or try different things in-game to chase them? It's legendary, so it kind of gives it that whole oh, it's, know, it's fantastic. It's fantastic to have that option. I just wish there were more options. Yeah. Uh, like uh, like saying, oh, it's either nothing or, you know, thousands of hours of work. That's not really fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, can't there be like a dozens of hours of work option in between? Right. That would be, that would be better. And yeah. the only option is nothing, gems, or freaking legendary, right? Yeah. So I feel like, you know, they could put, are there glider skins at the mastery vendors in Maguma? 
I do not believe so. There aren't, no. And I feel like this is a perfect place to have glider skins, right? Yeah, like, the Exalted Glider was really on the nice. gem store. Yeah. It was on the gem store. Like, why yeah. was the Exalted Glider on the gem store? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't that at the vendor? That yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, and one of the things that they did add to the vendors with the spring update was uh, home instance nodes, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, to put into your home instance, which is, you know, great, fantastic. It's good that they put it in through... I'm glad that they put it in rather through in-game rewards than in the gem well, store. Because they, like they monetize before. the hell out of the home instance on the gem store with well, the yeah. uh, the cloth nodes and mm -hmm. the trees and the mining nodes. Yeah. And I know people who have bought those, so they're yes. making money on those too. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy talk. Yeah. But, the, but the, I mean, the home instance is a little more well-balanced because, like you said, there's a lot of in-game ways to pimp out your home instance as well as yes. gem store ways. I've done some of the in-game ways. I don't... I, I never go to my home instance. I won't lie to you. Yeah. It's kind of a failed concept. Well, on, no, I mean, I think it comes in... It's become more popular with the regional um, mine Gather. harvesting, gathering. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's when I'll use it. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll just go in and complete my daily that way for whatever region. Um, except now Maguma, which we don't have a home instance stuff. Although, no, now they have those, those uh, whatchamacallit, rewards. So maybe I'll start using those for that as well. Um, I'm glad that it's in-game. Um, it, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a fine line to try and balance. Um, but the idea of this Mystic Forge stuff that they brought in, what I found interesting was that they said that this was a part of a bigger update to the Mystic Forge, was, which wasn't quite ready for this patch. So we pulled most of the changes, as well as the release notes. However, since this change did not go into the build, we wanted to let everyone know. So they did put some in, but the majority was kept off. So mm -hmm. what I would, I would like to know what what's being overhauled for the Mystic Forge. Yeah, I don't... Because, I mean, it seems like a pretty... I mean, I don't think it's a system people are particularly unhappy with. The Mystic Toilet. Besides the, besides the fact that it never gets gives you good what, things, right? But, right. I mean, the way like the way you take four things and put them in, I don't think anyone's unhappy with that. I just think people are unhappy with the outcomes. It's like, right, welcome, guys. Guys, it's a casino. Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the yeah. house... The ho Spoiler alert, the house always wins. Mm -hmm. So... You can't really be unhappy with never getting anything good out of your slot machine, right? <laughs> yeah. That's that's just whiny. I, I don't know. But it's just it, whiny. It's, I don't know, because one of the th reasons why they put in the legendary collections for the precursors was because the Mystic Forge was so too random. And, and because for something like a legendary that's like the only top tier prestige items in the game you can't have the only way to get the precursor be rng or on the yeah. trading post like yeah. that's stupid mm -hmm. so that in that way the collections make sense they kind of botched the collections because nobody likes them but mm -hmm. they're there if you don't want to make the gold and buy it on the trading post but that's cheaper than the collections anyway so people are just going to do that mm -hmm. so yeah maybe in that sense the mystic forge does need a bit of an overhaul. Why, my question is, is that overhaul going to... Excuse me. Mm -hmm. My <laughs> question is, is that overhaul going to affect the way the legendary collections work? I seriously doubt it, mm -hmm. because they seem to have just scrapped all work on those whatsoever, so I don't think yeah. it will. Right. I, so also, I also can't help but wonder if they're dividing their resources so much, like, they're like, oh, we need to shut down the legendary production, right, so we can make living world but you have time for a mystic forge overhaul that nobody you never announced ever right. that we had no idea about i don't i yeah. don't get it i don't know i don't know what they would change to the mystic forge other than changing the rng table yeah i can't RNG really... table, changing recipes for simple things um or adding new i mean i suppose adding new recipes adding new is ones one. Is a good if thing. it was just adding new ones, though, they wouldn't say overhaul. They would right. say, you know, a batch of new recipes or mm -hmm. whatever. So, yeah. yeah, the word overhaul is the... Well, I think the word overhaul came from me, but they use the word Did update. It? Yeah. Update, okay. Yeah. Okay, still update. I mean, so update could mean just new recipes. It definitely mm -hmm. could. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they would have in mind. I'm always down for new recipes, though. Like, yeah. I like that. Yeah. 
like I said, in-game rewards always make me happy. They do have a prerogative to make money through the gem store, but I feel like um, they've been a little bit lackluster with in-game, with updating in-game rewards. That being said, with these quarterly patches, that gives them a new opportunity to set a precedent that they haven't set before of delivering new in-game rewards. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, think about the in-game rewards that are already available um, that came in with Heart of Thorns. Um, we had new armor and weapon skins that came in. Yeah. And they are earnable through gameplay and gameplay. Mm-hmm. Which gameplay and gameplay. Yeah. So this is good. Or is it? And, I mean, how <laughs> many... There, I mean, th- we have what the bladed, the laystone mm-hmm. armor set, and I want to say there was another one. There, yeah, there's a third that I'm not remembering right now. I want to say there was that third little uh, mm-hmm. god, and I can't remember it. I can't remember it either. Maybe chat remembers. Um, but the what I liked about the um. The skin rewards in uh, Heart of Thorns is that they followed the model that they brought in with the Living World um, Season 2 with this idea of here's a container for Mm -hmm. whatever you want. You get to choose what weight and you get to choose what stats. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of cool. Mm hmm. Um, Go ahead. And I, like I said, I just, I feel like we don't, um, because I don't think we got any sort of armor weapons skins with the god i'm overlooking i know i'm overlooking something here but with the january uh patch the january i mean we patch, got the sh- yeah the january patch the shatter- the shatterer weapons. backpack yeah and the yeah. weapons yeah right the hidden weapons for those Was, weapons. is there a weapon set with the shatter i don't think there's a weapon set with the shatterer or am i thinking of something else yeah i could be thinking of something else yeah but sh- the, the backpack shatter- is the one thing that i remember yeah for sure and then with the spring update I don't know, would you count the uh, the Mystic Forge stuff that we're talking about now? That came with the spring update, right? And it was just discovered, uh, mm-hmm. like, last week? Yeah. Okay, so we got a few returning items mm-hmm. with the spring patch. But they were, I mean, in my opinion, the Halloween set is the biggest deal, right? Because those were so such absurdly priced. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a cool step in the right direction. i just like to see... I mean, I guess one new weapon set is kind of ridiculous to ask for every patch because mm-hmm. that's a lot of work, and they want to save, they want to save that for the Black Lion stuff. Right. But I don't know. I mean, maybe we... some special. I don't know. It's it's a hard it's a hard because it, it's a hard thing to propose because then now you have the game being flooded with rewards, right? Right. right. And you're running out of ways to implement them. Yeah. So. And they are keeping. Um... Well, we know that Living World Season 3 is coming with Quarter 3, most likely. Which will obviously patch, have a plethora of new rewards. Which will have new, most likely a new armor set, um, like they did mm-hmm. with, uh, was it the Luminate? The, the Luminescent and Carapace, yeah. Carapace. I still like the Carapace better than the glowy blue stuff. Yeah, I don't like the Luminescent. Yeah. Um, so, that's something. I don't know that would get weapons, though, as well. I there will be I think there will be both weapons and armor with Living World Season Three. I think Living World Season Three, like they're progressing forward in their game, right? They're moving forward after mm-hmm. the lackluster um, story content of uh, Heart of Thorns. They yeah. really need to knock it out of the park with Season Three. So I think yeah. Season Three is going to be bigger and better than both Heart of Thorns and Season Two of Living World in yeah. terms of story. Maybe not bigger than Heart of Thorns and. Thorns in terms of rewards, because Heart of Thorns had like five weapon sets, right? Mm-hmm. But I'd be willing to bet there will be a weapon set with Living World Season 3. Yeah, I think that's not hard to imagine, because they really, really want to please with Season 3. Yeah. So I think they're going to have all, they're going to pull out all the stops. What weapon sets came in with Season 2? We had the Ambrite weapons? That was part um, of Dry Top. Yeah, the Ambrite weapons was part of Dry Top with the, with the insects. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, was there was there a weapon set from the silver wastes? Like, from the silver wastes, yes. The ban no, because the bandit skins were already skins. Well, they were already game. in the game. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were already in. So I think it was so, just the armor. Yeah, I think you're right, but 
Um, there was some unique things put in with the silver waist, like the queen bee trinket that makes you all bzz. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. And I'd actually love to see more things like that. Um, I like what they've been doing with the auras in the gems. No, those aren't even in the gem store. Those are in-game rewards. What, and those are things infusions? I really like. Like the, like the snowy one yeah. and the bee. Like, those are awesome. They need to do those, like, yeah. every single patch because <laughs> those are amazing. Well, they've got these ghostly infusions um, that are mm-hmm. coming out of raids. And they're, yeah. like, a couple and hundred, they couple hundred all, on the... They make you blue. They go all whoosh, blue, right? Yeah, blue. There's, like, and a blue think, aura infusions are a much better way of doing that than like mm-hmm. shoulder piece or something because that wastes an armor slot you know you want to have your shoulders and have your aura right. so i'd like them to swap the uh the uh sho- the ones that are shoulder items to like um, infusions infusions because i think that's a good way to do it i mean a lot of people are saying aura slot that would also be a great way to do yeah. it to be a lot more work yeah. so i think swapping those items to infusions would be the best way to go and just have it um, be a skin infusion. Do, does the because it takes up an infusion slot. Does it so? Does it give you stats also? I think so. Yeah, because I haven't looked at the ghostly infusions. I'm sorry, guys. I'm woefully ignorant of the make, game I'm talking let's about. Let's wiki this. But because uh, I feel like because now you have the issue of stats versus look, so you want to have that infusion grant that look and also the stats, so people don't have to sacrifice like that. Mm-hmm. So I would I would love, but. Going back to what I was saying, those are what I'm talking about in terms of awesome steps forward in the in terms of in-game rewards being delivered to us through patches and stuff. I love mm-hmm. what they're doing. The auras. Yeah, I like. So the I, I'd be willing. We'll get one with uh, Living World Season Three. Yeah, I think we totally will. They do have stats. The ghostly infusions. Good. That's um, perfect. Then. I don't know if they're selectable though, because you know mm-hmm. I'm not a raider. As long as the stats are there and it's possible to get all the different types of combos, mm-hmm. I would be perfectly happy. Because yeah. I don't mind a bit of RNG um, in my reward systems. A lot mm-hmm. of people hate it, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I'd be willing to bet we'll get new armor, new weapons, and a new aura trinket infusion shoulder piece Something. of some sort with Something. Season 3. Yeah. Which I think would satisfy me for the most part. And mm-hmm. I'd be willing to bet, like, the other aura trinket shoulder piece infusion things um it'll be pretty difficult to attain yeah i like too that they are um expanding that they have expanded their reward system to include trinkets like you're saying but that those trinkets are also stat selectable um right they've got the um i'm thinking of the not sinister are you thinking of the forgotten seals that you get at the end of season two that are there are those and then there are the ones from uh heart of thorns as well um Oh, what is that stat set that I'm thinking of that I can't remember? It's not sinister. It's a condition Vipers. damage. Vipers, yes, because you can get Vipers yeah. trinkets as well through the mm-hmm. through the season, through the story. Right. And I'd be willing to bet that's exactly how they'll do the armor set in uh, mm-hmm. at least for the. Um, I wouldn't. I don't know if we will get a new stat combo with season three, but I think it's likely since we got new stat combos with season yeah. two. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'd be willing to bet this. that's how they'll do it with season three. I'd also be willing to bet there will be. A um, an armor set you get for completing all the story steps, mm-hmm. just like Carapace in Season mm-hmm. 2. And I think there will be a prestige armor set also that's a lot more difficult to get, whether it be a variant on the new armor set, like uh, Luminescent was on Carapace, mm-hmm. or whether it be a completely new sort of just fancy fanciness, right? Um, but I think that will be tied to the achievements like the Luminescent was in Season 2. I think that's a really good way of doing things. Yeah. I just I just want to see them continue on that route on that route as well as give us a uh, little things here and there with the quarterly patches. Yeah, I would love to see glider skins for sure as in-game rewards through season yeah. 3. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not just weapons and armor, yeah. right? We've got glider skins and back pieces. Or, back and pieces. Minis. Even, yeah, back pieces they've been pretty good about. Yeah, they have. giving us in game, but the glider skins are where I'm really hurting in game and uh, you know, I'm a I'm into the fashion, so armor sets never hurt yeah. either. I wonder. But, uh, I, skins what I really want. Yeah, I wonder if the um, out of that Mystic Forge with the the leftovers, of uh, from season one or the that they things that they brought back, if that will include the Spinal Blades blueprints, because I think the only way to get those now is through the trading post, and I don't even know how if there are any still available. Hmm. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
Because I think I had an exotic Spinal Blades back piece, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll upgrade it sometime. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I hate that back piece, and I never would upgrade it, so I threw it away. Yeah. But, uh, like, I'm not sorry. I don't care if I ever get that back piece. It right. looks just awful. Yeah. So, but, you know, for people who want that, which I actually see that one around quite a bit. Yeah, so it's still quite popular. If um, that's difficult to get right now, making, easing, easing how you get that might... Yeah. Because to, to change it from the um, exotic default glow, which was like an orangey yellow, to the mm -hmm. red, blue, and green, you had to have fought in the Lion's Arch. Uh, you can buy the you can buy the cores on the trading post. Right, but how many they're are expensive. still around? Because they're, they're expensive. Yeah, they're yeah. they're expensive. Yeah. And uh, I I mean, making that more accessible to people would ultimately make the player base happier. I think, but I am one of those players. Who are like, I like the idea of those items in game that it's like, yeah, those are, uh, can't get those anymore. Right. That's when you see one of those, that's pretty cool. Like, I right. like that. I like, yeah, I like it makes it I a bit more exclusive. Like it does. Yeah. And I'm, it's because I, you know, we're part of the older MMO crowd. So it, we're like, more used to items like that. Like, they don't bother us. Like, they bother some of the newer people. Was it the Dragon Bash, the, the Shattered, and the other one? The Shattered wind? Wings, yeah. Yeah. People really want, like, people want the Shattered Wings, and you can't get them because mm -hmm. you need to complete that meta. The yeah. other ones can be purchased on the trading post. I think they're really expensive, but they can be. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, because both of those were only available during that period. So those are other items that, you know, could potentially become Mystic Forge acquisitions. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I do. I like items like that that are super rare because they're only available in a short window or they're only a holiday item or something like that. I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not going to bother me too much if they make it a little easier to get. Yeah. N Netco in chat brings up uh, that check egg sack that never drops from the check Garrett. He only saw one available once for 10k gold. Oh, wow. One of those legendary flipper people probably bought it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I'll sell my four eternities so I can get that. <laughs> no big deal. But yeah, th that thing is very similar to the Queen Bee trinket you trinket. can get from freaking Vine Wrath. Uh, guys, I've done like 10,000 Vine Wraths. I've never got it, okay? it's So it's only available it's, from Vine Wrath? Yeah, Vine Wrath Chest is the only place you can get the Queen Bee trinket, I'm pretty sure. Wow. And. I, yeah, I mean, you know how many vine rats I've done. Yeah, I've done, you, you lived in the silver race for. Yeah, I've done a, I've done a fair few <laughs> vine rats. And I've never seen hide nor hair of this thing, so I think it's like two thousand gold or something on the trading post. Pretty yeah. stupid. So yeah, stuff like that I like, but I'd also like there to be other aura items that are a little more easy to attain. I think since the aura is kind of a very flashy thing, it should always they should always be a little bit prestige. Mm -hmm. But there should be some that are easier, some that are more difficult. Yeah, like the ghostly infusions. Uh, my understanding is uh, that they cost a thousand of the magnetite shards, I think, and there's a cap on the magnetite shards that you can earn per week of a hundred. Mm -hmm. So, you so it's at least uh, like three months of work. Yeah, you still got to pay like ten ten weeks, right? Yikes. Mm -hmm. But then, then they sell for like four hundred and some odd mm -hmm. gold right now on the trading post. So. It's making money for some people because it's yeah. it's exclusive. Or I mean, so. at least that's making at least that's making raiding profitable because that's like the main complaint about raiding is that yeah, it's fun and it's challenging, but the drops the loot, are big. yeah, not, not kind of the loot's a bit crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm yeah. glad that you can make money off raiding yeah. somehow. I think the cool thing that they brought in, or one of the th cool things that they brought in with the raiding, was uh, the white mantle weapons. I mean. If anything, oh, yeah, I like, yet another... I like those for the most part. Some of them are a bit... Uh, yeah, but... but that's kind of the thing with uh, uh, most of their most of mm. their weapons. The other day I was playing through some old personal story um, steps, and one of the things that I liked ab uh, about the personal story rewards now is that you get armor rewards and weapon rewards at certain levels. Most of the rewards are stuff that Jump. you... Skins for skins that you can craft or that are really yeah. frequently dropped, and then they'll become soul-bound or account-bound. You can't salvage them most of the time. Um, but every once in a while, when you hit the order uh, chapter, which I believe is chapter 3... Um, when you hit like those main thresholds in the story where it's like, now you get a super cool reward. Yeah, and you get the, the choice of the order weapon skins, which you can oh, go yeah, out and purchase. Really nice. You can yeah. go out and purchase those um, from the vendors. But I like that you get those rewards as well. And mm -hmm. I, I was doing, I think I was doing Order of Whispers or 
vigil no it was vigil and there were some skins in there that i'm going i didn't even remember that i unlocked this when did this happen yeah so it was just neat to and you know i've got the whatever skin fashion collector title um for having x amount of skins but there are so many skins in the game that i hardly mm -hmm. remember what i even have anymore yeah. um which i guess those nice order thing. skins are like three gold each a little bit like if you want to if you want to unlock all of them, it's a little pricey. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have those in there. Yeah, I know. So that yeah, I I guess I like the way they're delivering in-game skin rewards. I just wish it was a smidge more frequent. Mm -hmm. it, it, I like they don't need to bring the gem store down because they obviously need to make their sales. I just wish they'd bring the in-game rewards up, up, maybe a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if we could get. Um... I like the container idea that they're using with the living world. So if they could, if they would to like overhaul or refresh the personal story updates again, I'd like to see containers for some of the what the uh, armor and weapon mm -hmm. things. That way you can kind of get a bit of a choice if you already have something. Um, well, most of the time, I already got the skins unlocked, so I'm just kind of like, meh, whatever, delete. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but it would be cool for like some of the order weapons or. In at the end of chapter one, I think it is, you get access to one skin from the tier one cultural armor on the personal story now, which is kind of neat. Oh, very cool! Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was a neat way when I discovered that um, is a way to start collecting the Solari ones because those Solari skins are, are nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cultural cultural armor. I mean. Cultural armor tends to look great. The char, I'm a little iffy on some of it, but char char cultural armor is like half and half, and the rest of it, I like more or less all of it. Yeah. There are a few Nord ones that are a little weird, but, you know. Yeah. Some they did a really good job with the cultural armors. Mm -hmm. Like, like those were there at launch, right? And they're still pretty much the best armor sets in the game. Yeah, I think so. so. Yeah, they're nice. So that's, I think that's a sign that they kind of outdid themselves with the cultural armor sets. For sure. For sure. Um... I think we run through our stuff, man. What the heck? Our hour went fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, bottom line for me, right? I just, I wish, uh, I understand that they need to make money. Mm -hmm. I understand that they have a good team of people. Obviously, they have a great team of people working on the gym store stuff that mm -hmm. can pound out uh, rapid content. Yeah. I just wish, uh, maybe divert a little bit of that creativity to the in-game. Rewards team. To the in-game pool of rewards. That would yeah. be great. Yeah, a little bit more. That's, that's all. Yeah, more players are always going to be finding something. We want more of this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up our talk this week. If you, mm -hmm. Unless you have anything else, but I, I know I'm kind of good. Nah, I think I just wanted to uh, to rant about gem store stuff. Well, you know, you know, I don't I know. To, I, don't know it was I good. need to get it off my chest every few months It's or good so. to have a productive conversation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to give you a little bit of news, we do other things at Guild Mag other than our podcast, uh, in addition to, I should say. And this week we had an article come out, 10 things to do during a content break, um, that one of our writers put together. So if you're looking for ideas on what to do, check out guildmag.com. I'll give you the link to that right there. Um, and we're going to be doing, let's see, this week we've got a little a shorter addition to the Herta guide. I know that Delphi's is out, but Delphi's just stops right before you get to that last piece, which mm. is the actual device itself. So we just did a little short one that includes that last piece. So if you're looking for a quick and dirty, um, it'll be quick and not so dirty because I think we did a nice job. Kyle Bajui, one of our editors, put that together. Together. <laughs> so we'll be having that coming out this week. Yep. So that's going to wrap us up for this week. Um, join us every Sunday here on twitch.tv slash guildmag. We're here at 1 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. British Standard Time, which is 8 p.m. GMT. And we will find something to talk about next week about this game that we play so much. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So thanks for everyone for joining us in chat. Uh, for joining us live, and we will see you next week. See you guys. Bye.